Hello my juicy co-creators, Lilu here in the beautiful island of Maui with delicious Jacob Liverman. I'm back here. I loved it. I wanted some more. How are you doing? I'm delicious. How can I be anything but wonderful? <laughs> this is great. We had to have another conversation. Absolutely. I can't get enough. Oh, I can never get enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maybe so we're both French. <laughs> I made you smile now. <laughs> yeah, I'm turning red too. Okay, so um, I wanted to, to just start where we left off with a conversation earlier, which is all about remembering who we truly are. Can you tell us more about that? What would be important right now for us to, to remember on this journey? Well, if you remember, that isn't it. Because it's nothing that can be remembered. Mm -hmm. It's just, um, it's almost like you're taken somewhere when you least expect it or when you're not looking. And all of a sudden, you notice that you're there. But as soon as you notice, you're not there. So then the noticing leaves and then you're in this place so we try to describe the remembering or the presence or, or this state, but there is no one there to describe it when it's actually happening. So the words can never actually describe what it is you're speaking about because there's no language for that. So, the, the, we remember it sometimes when we are feeling love with someone, whether it's a, a, an intimate lover or a family member or a very dear friend, you know, or you're just having a delicious conversation with someone where everything seems to disappear. Something is happening. The talking is happening all by itself. When you look from the outside, it looks like the people are talking. But what's actually happening is that life is speaking each of them. They have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. It's just happening all by itself, just like your heart beating all by itself. That's it. But I don't know how to say anything else about it. But we're, we're remembering our essence, we're remembering that we're more than just this physical body, we're remembering ooh, there's, there's a process to that because a lot of people right now are facing, facing difficulties yeah. and it, there's what it seems to be true, but there is something else in the background that is really running the show and that we could open ourselves to. Yeah, you know the simplest thing that comes to me, um, which we spoke about before, is if you were wealthy and your heart was even wealthier than your pocket, you would want to help people. You would want to do whatever you could to, to, to make someone smile because when someone smiles, ah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, Terry and I had breakfast a couple of weeks ago and this lovely couple walked in. I never saw this couple, but they started speaking to us and they sat down. They were sort of interesting and, and then the the server came to the table with our check and I said, I'd like to pay for their breakfast, but don't tell them. And so we picked up their breakfast and uh, I gave the man a little piece of paper and it said, for all the love you've given, a little love in return. And we left into the night. We may never see them again. I cannot tell you the um, incredible something mm -hmm. that I felt was with me like the angels were holding me for a long period of time. Now, it doesn't take money. In this case, it took a few dollars. But it could be anything. You know, we have opportunities all day long. Someone does something beautiful for us. We're sitting at a table and someone is coming to give us coffee or tea or our food or prepare it beautifully. Most of the time we forget to, to um, express our gratefulness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we leave money, but the money is not the gratefulness. 
the money is just a little something, but to look into the person's eyes, to to really express, it's, it's something very, very special. Um, I have those experiences happening all day long. I notice them and they are uh, the most beautiful moments of my life. So it doesn't make a difference if you have money or you don't have money or if you have big difficulties or small difficulties. Those moments, at least for a period of time, they take away the difficulties. And uh, I refer to it as planting a seed of goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, it isn't that we're trying to plant anything. It just happens that when that occurs... It's like a pebble dropping into a still lake. All of a sudden, you have these concentric rings going out into infinity. Every time that opportunity comes to us, and something inside of us is moved with it, this pebble drops into the, the lake we call the universe, and a contagious field of wellness spreads. And it touches everything. And each person doesn't have to change the world. But if each person, every time the opportunity comes, if they're able to see it, something in their heart will be moved. They do not have to do anything. Mm -hmm. They don't have to intend anything or be anything. Something will just be moved and this impact will occur. And if each person began to notice this, began to notice how they are moved by it, it doesn't require any effort, it's totally without them. And then the joy, the, um, the peace, um, I don't know, it's, it's an ecstasy that has no monetary value, no material value, but it's the most potent thing on the planet. That's where everyone becomes wealthy. That's where the, the veil disappears between the person that has and the person that doesn't have because we all discover that what is really essential is indescribably delicious mm -hmm. so yeah and, and yet to allow that it requires vulnerability and authenticity yeah. and to know that we're not separate so it is it is it is a big jump there for a lot of people yeah for all of us <laughs> yes but you know everyone has the experience in one moment or another mm -hmm. you know um, yeah, but I'm talking here to live permanently this life, to do this this shift, to experience it more and more, and, and as you're experiencing it nearly throughout the entire day. You know, um, I experience it a lot, and then there are times when we all forget. And the value of the forgetting is that <clears throat> the forgetting opens the door to the remembering. Mm -hmm. So... The idea that we walk on a certain path and then all of a sudden we've arrived. No more problems. Everything is perfect. I get what I want when I want it. I, have, I don't actually find that to be the experience of life. I think we are continually holding in each hand one holding earth and one holding heaven. One holding a state of heavenly non-duality and the other one holding the state of duality called samsara, the cycle of life. And we are continually holding both. If you flip a coin, 50% of the time it's heads and 50% of the time it's tails. Life is exactly the same way. 50% it's this way, 50% it's this way. The bliss is not because we get what we want. The bliss is that in spite of those moments mm -hmm. when we're taken into a place that is uncomfortable, physically, emotionally, whatever, in spite of that, mm -hmm. 
something still gets up the next morning, returns the phone calls, returns the emails, makes the tea, makes the breakfast for the person that you love, and then in a moment when you're not looking, all of a sudden that's gone, and you're somewhere else. So to, f to experience this state for me does not mean the elimination of illness or days that are not so good or loss of income or a, a, a disruption in, in a relationship. It's not that. It's just that something recognizes that that is part of the experience. You know, sometimes we speak <clears throat> about unconditional acceptance. Unconditional acceptance includes those moments when we are not unconditionally accepting. Mm -hmm. It includes everything. Even those moments we say, ah, this is shit. <laughs> but the shit also makes beautiful flowers. So that's the piece for me. It's, it's um, a, con a, a gradual ability to embrace more and more the moments that are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not an easy place because none of us are comfortable when we're uncomfortable. But after a while, we experience that all we are are a set of infinite eyes. All we are is something that notices. And the more we the more this noticing is, the less what is being noticed impacts. The identity is not with the world or with the body or with the changing chatter. It's with this something else that's noticing all of this phenomenon. Mm -hmm. When you show up in a room, when you're uh, doing a talk, uh, speaking or traveling, when you enter a space, you have a presence about you. It's like you, the, the space, the energy in that space changes. Yeah. And so uh, do you have some uh, advice or something to say about that, that we can also bring in our own life to bring this presence so that then there's a certain listening, there's a certain silence, there's a certain communication that can take place and that, that is uh, fertile for the heart to open? Yeah. Um. It's not us. It's perhaps a godliness that flows through everything in this universe. How do you bring it? By noticing the part of this chatter inside. You see it, when, when everything is flowing, there's very little going on up here. The only time this gets activated is when something scares us a little bit. It's not quite the way we would like it or we're concerned about the outcome. And so we go through this process. We call it thinking, but it's actually worrying. Mm -hmm. And it, it just occurs, uh, and we've been indoctrinated to believe that if we really do this properly, we can figure things out. But we cannot figure out anything. We don't understand how anything works whatsoever. So one of the keys is sometimes life provides uh, something that initially looks terrible, like, like you're going to do a presentation and your PowerPoint doesn't work. But you just find out two minutes before the introduction. And life provides an opportunity for you to feel the utter terror of forgetting everything in front of a thousand people. And then you share this with the audience and they begin laughing, not at you, but at themselves because their whole life they've been doing exactly the same thing, preparing everything in hopes that it will be perfect. I will appear enlightened. I will know the answer. You know, I will have it all together. But there's a reason they call it a presentation. 
it's just prepared. It's like an edited text. It's perfect. But where is the heart in this? So when life provides those moments, all of a sudden, something starts speaking through us. It's absolutely exquisite. It has nothing to do with logic. It's not linear. It's a lot happening all at the same moment. It's beyond understanding. The person has no idea what's funneling through their lips. But something happens. All of a sudden, the whole space, uh, there's a silence. And everyone, including the person sitting in the front, finds themselves taken away somewhere. And it's only afterwards that they say, oh my God, what happened in there? Do you remember what they said? No, I have no idea. If you say to the person on the stage, um, could you repeat what you just said? They'll look at you and they have no idea what you're talking about because they didn't say anything. Now, the reason I, I can speak about this is about 34 years ago, I was asked to do a talk mm -hmm. at a university to a group of PhD candidates. And at that time, we didn't have computers. And so before you did a presentation, you would make notes on little three by five inch cards. So you had a stack of cards and, and everyone would speak behind a podium because no one was supposed to know that they, you were looking at the cards. And so I, I was introduced and I started walking out and all the cards fell on the floor. And I couldn't bend over to pick them up because then everyone would know that I had written it all out. So I got to the podium and by that time I was sweating. I was really, I mean, I was dripping wet. <laughs> My heart was pumping. I was hot and cold at the same time. I almost could not speak. And then I took a deep breath and I looked at this group of people that I thought were wondering, when the hell is he gonna start, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, let me tell you what just happened. And I just vulnerably shared with them how I wanted this talk to be really good and I wrote it all out. And, uh, and I heard some laughter and I thought they were laughing at me. And then I said, and after I was introduced, I was walking out and I dropped all the cards on the floor. And I went over, I grabbed the cards and said, see, here they are. And then the whole place started roaring with laughter. Mm -hmm. And I was embarrassed because I thought they were laughing at me. And then someone raised their hand from the audience. And they said, I'm so happy that you shared that. I said, why is that? Because I don't know about everyone else, but I've done that my whole life. And I don't know what it's like not to do that. And now I'm going to actually experience it in real time. And then this 45 minute talk went for like three hours. I haven't got the slightest idea what was said, mm -hmm. but the people wouldn't leave. And it was such an epiphany for me that I never prepared anything again. Mm -hmm. That was the very last time and I can't even begin, I have an allergic reaction if I think I'm going to do it. So that's a magnificent opportunity. So what's the piece? You have to take a chance. You have to take yourself right to the edge voluntarily and then dive off. And put ourselves in the unknown. In the unknown because it's only in the unknown where everything is known. But it's not that we know everything. Mm -hmm. It's just the intelligence of life funnels through us and everything else. And it's, see that's what's so beautiful about spontaneous, like this conversation we're having. You have no idea where the questions are coming from. I have no idea where the answers are coming from. 
looks like we're having an interaction, but it's nothing to do with us. Something else is conspiring mm -hmm. to move something out into the airwaves. Yet yeah, there is, it seems like there's a challenge uh, as human beings is that once we see something works, we want to reproduce it and then right. boom, we stepped again in the known. Right. So, you know, the, because we're seduced by that, we can be seduced by right. even even being in that space and figure out how and then and then we're not anymore so much in the present moment right. or experiencing right. it. So right. there is a there is a fine uh, it's all it's it, we have to always recreate recreate or step in the new constantly, uh, even True. even in those moments that look similar. That's a big challenge right there. You know, um, I don't remember whether Terry was with me, but I was invited to speak at an international conference of doctors a few years ago in California. And uh, I did a talk, and then a very dear friend of mine came in afterwards, and someone said to him, "Were you? did you sit in on that talk? And he said, oh no, I've heard Jacob before. And then the person said to them, Jacob never says the same thing twice. And this person was in some way thinking that it was a one of those presentations that you do 300 times and it's just like a... You could put the tape on, you don't even need the person. <laughs> But, see, that excites the mind and it can touch the heart as well it has to be a very very fine balance but you know it's like when we're having a conversation what's lovely is that neither one of us are talking at the other person we're sh just having a conversation when I am asked to speak I will come into the room way before anyone is there and I sit in the chair and I look around and it's very important to me that I can make eye contact with every person in every chair because I feel like I'm having an intimate conversation with each person even though I have no idea what's being discussed and I think that's why I have often said words have medicinal value. Mm -hmm. that, that when that state occurs, the words are not words. They are carriers of something that has a very, very potent medicinal effect. It's interesting that you use the word word when, when most of your work is based on light and you're saying that through light information comes in. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is light. This this thing that we are discussing is just another aspect of light. You know, it's it's uh, it's non-material. It's not describable. It doesn't have attributes. No one has ever been able to say what it is. I mean, we are attempting to describe the indescribable. And yet, it's, it's the most profound moment of life. You know, people have a Satori experience. In the East, the word Satori means kick in the eye. There's a kick in the inner eye and something opens up. You know, oh, I haven't... An, an, you're never the same. You're never the same. And yes, it's natural. The mind says, well, let's figure out how that happened. Mm -hmm. And people are very, very seduced by not only trying to figure it out, but but then packaging it. Oh, it's a good book, or it's a good course, or it's a good something. But there's nothing like the real thing, baby, is the way that the expression goes. And the, it's, it's very difficult to package it in something It's designed to be fresh mm -hmm. every time. It's like you wouldn't eat old food. And yet, 
we're so accustomed to giving a, a presentation over and over again, like we're serving the same thing over and over again. It's not fresh. There's no nutrition in it. So when it's fresh each time, it's filled with light. And it is very, very powerful and immense. Mm. But it has nothing to do with us. We cannot control it. Mm. And it fills our soul. It fills our beingness. It, it connects us. We're overflowing. Yes. It, we're not only overflowing, we're speechless. And we are humble to tears. I mean, we're humble to tears. People say, oh, that was great. And you have no idea whether, t who are they talking to? Maybe the person behind me. Because there's a recognition that it's nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. It's some universal energy, godliness, whatever you wish to call it. The name is not what it is. But the source of life comes through and wow, it's just... Mm -hmm. More and more people use the word channeling now, and I'm channeling this and channeling this entity, and I wrote this book, Channeling, and I have to come out about my channeling. You're talking about channeling right now, more or less, aren't you? I never use this term because when the experience is, I am not there. So there is no one channeling from my experience. Others may have a different experience, it's just my experience. I've never had the sense of a voice speaking to me. My sense is that if it has a voice, it's that voice that we hear very often. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I experience this is voiceless. It, it's so, something is clear, but I can't tell you exactly what the something is. But I don't experience it as a voice. I've never had the experience of an entity uh, mm -hmm. speaking through me. It. Um, I can't imagine that there are different entities. My my sense is that there's a source. I don't know, maybe it's the universe's library of Congress. There's a source, and uh, in those magical moments, it, like a river, it flows through us. And we do not direct the river, any river, and the river of life we do not direct either. It's just, it's almost like it has its own direction, its own something, mm -hmm. and it, it happens to be j moving through us in this moment. And, um, um, you know, it's, the difficulty of, of, of this conversation is that there is that seduction that you speak of, you know, the, um, wow, it's amazing. And what do I have to do to, to, to get that, to have that? To, so it's, um, it's a source of a lot of marketing because people want the steps. But like in quantum physics, there's something called a quantum leap. Something is here, and then it's over here. But it didn't go through the space in between. There's no steps. Mm -mm. There's no bridge. It's a quantum leap. It's a creative uh, expanse. And see, the state is a state of choicelessness. There's infinite possibility, but there's nothing choosing. Because in that non-dual state, it's choiceless. So this place where people say, well, if you choose properly, <clears throat> it's not this thing that we hear that is choosing. 
it's something called non-local consciousness where it originates but in non-locality there's no chooser either that's why this is um it's so mysterious because it's that magical piece it's it is the light that causes the plant to move towards it it is the light that causes the human being to move towards it if we could really find that light then there would be no reason to live any longer mm. so it always stays behind view so that there's always something that's moving life and that movement which we say is constantly changing is what we call evolution mm -hmm. that's what's always moving life mm -hmm. and it doesn't go backwards it always keeps moving this way it seems to me that you um, you are allowing the silence to be there and in that silence there is something else emerging and i think a lot of us just rush through life and we're go 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 and we don't really allow this silence and step in it and step in this unknown for so that new things can come through and you have when you talk and everybody's not to sing this you, you just take your time and you really infuse in the in the words and in the essence and the present moment whatever that brings and you let yourself kind of flow through it Uh, trusting it at this instance yeah this is the most important piece this instance isn't always there it's not always there for anyone everyone gets moving too quickly everyone worries everyone tries to figure it out everybody gets concerned about all kinds of different things I don't care how enlightened they are. They all experience the same thing to one degree or another. So the most important thing that I can share with your viewers is I'm incredibly grateful for this moment that we are sharing now. And Me too. <laughs> and, it, and it's flowing, yes? Yes. But there are many moments when it isn't. And I am caught in the exact same place that every human being finds itself. That's what we need to share. Mm -hmm. That all of that is existing simultaneously and in spite of that, something keeps moving forward. Something keeps moving forward. And because it's always moving towards some light, towards something so, um, you know, I hope this yearning in me will go until I'm 90-something or as long as I'm going um, to be here. The, you see, we have an epidemic of people thinking there's something wrong with them if they're not perfect. There's something wrong with us if we cannot create life the way we want it. Or if we notice that, that the mind makes... Um, Um, says, oh, I like this, but I don't like this. As a judgment. Oh, it cannot be judgmental. And we have all of this um, prejudice against our own experience. The focus is, oh, there's something wrong with me because I had a judgment or I'm not present enough. The exquisiteness is not what is noticed, is that something is noticed. See, we get so caught up is, oh, I had a judgment, I can't have judgments, I have to meditate more. Or what. The awareness is the curative piece. Every time we see it, rather than saying, ah, I did it again, mm -hmm. it's more about, oh, I get to notice that. I get to notice that. And it's, that's the blessing. Mm -hmm. Not so much what is being observed, 
but just that something is observing. And it's in the observation that it changes by itself. In quantum physics, they say uh, the world changes when God blinks. And you see, we notice something, and then the focus becomes on what is noticed, and then the energy is, I want a different intention. I want to change that behavior. I want to eliminate the belief system. I want to have a different affirmation. From my experience, this change that people are yearning for, it doesn't come from doing anything, mm -hmm. from trying to change behavior, from being less judgmental, from doing this affirmation. or the, it's n None of those things are, are bad. In the seeing, the change occurs. The moment that there's a noticing, and if you are able, through an instance of grace, to be awed, oh, wow, by the mere noticing of it, that changes all by itself. Nothing has to be touched. The act of attempting to change it is like signing a year's lease on an, on an apartment you don't want any longer. Just, just in the noticing, something turns, mm -hmm. and it turns, and it turns. And um, anyway. Beautiful. Thank you for another juicy moment, Jacob. Uh, I love, I love juicy it. Juicy moments, thank you. <laughs> you have to keep coming back to Maui. Yes, in January. Oh, absolutely, because <laughs> I want another juicy moment. Yes, <laughs> we all do. Well, much love, my beautiful co-creators from Maui. And uh, what can we say? Aloha. Aloha. Yeah. <laughs>